So without wasting time, let's start the video. I am going to demonstrate the ultrasound guided coronal oblique approach of subclavian perivascular or supraclavicular brachial plexus block based on the Phrygian cap or Liberty cap pattern. The patient is placed in supine position with head end of the bed slightly elevated. Alternatively, semi-sitting or beach chair position can be used. The head is turned towards the opposite side and the ipsilateral arm is adducted. A pillow or folded sheet is placed under the scapula. Lateral position can make the probe placement and needling easier, especially in challenging patients. A high frequency linear transducer 5200 millimeter of 22 gauge short bevel ecogenic nerve block needle is used for this block. I use a concentration of 0.5% or above in case of sole anesthesia and for analgesia 0.25% or below. About 20 to 25 mils of local anesthetic is usually required for this block to cover all the neural elements due to the variable position of the plexus. Because of the high vascularity of the supraclavicular area, I try to include 2% lignocaine ADR as it acts as a vascular marker. The transducer is placed over the supraclavicular fossa, immediately cranial to the midpoint of the clavicle. First, try to look for the fixed anatomical landmarks like artery and bone. Here, you can see the subclavian artery as the round and equic structure. Anterior to it is the subclavian vein with valves inside. Parietal pleura and the rib can be seen as the linear hyperechoic structures. Rib casts an anechoic acoustic shadow and it is immobile structure, whereas the pleura appear as the hyperechoic shimmery structure moving with the respiration. The brachial plexus lies posterolateral to the subclavian artery in a Phrygian cap pattern. The neural elements can be seen as multiple small round hypoechoic nodules with hyperechoic borders, giving the classic bunch of grip appearance. After placing the probe in coronal oblique orientation, the nerve block needle is inserted in plane from lateral to medial direction. Here, our strategy is to use small volume of local anesthetic for hydrodissection and advance the tip of the needle slowly. As you can see here, I don't prefer a direct corner pocket injection. Instead, I use the local anesthetic jet to separate the neural elements of the brachial plexus from the sheath and deposit the local anesthetic between middle and the lower trunk first. A palpable or visible pop is appreciated whenever the needle is inserted into the sheath. Each time, 3 to 5 mils of local anesthetic is injected after negative aspiration for blood and air. The second injection is performed between the superior and the middle trunk as you can see here with the same strategy that is target the white or hyperechoic tissue, hydrodissect and advance the needle tip. The third injection that is above the superior trunk is not always necessary. You may avoid this one. High vascularity of the supraclavicular area poses a risk for inadvertent intravascular injection. The dorsal scapular artery passes through or coursed around the brachial plexus. The transverse cervical artery passes superficial to the scalene muscles and the brachial plexus. Other vessels such as suprascapular artery or vertebral artery 
can be found within the vicinity of the brachial plexus. Hence, please make a habit of using color Doppler before the needle placement. Multiple injection technique increases the speed of onset and the success rate, but it carries a higher risk of nerve injury. As I have mentioned before, avoid targeting the hypoechoic neural elements. Instead, you can advance the needle towards the hyperechoic sheath or connective tissue and inject the local anesthetic there and also avoid injection against the high resistance. In coronal oblique or conventional approach, only a short segment of the first rib is visualized, exposing the pleura close to the plexus or subclavian artery. If the tip of the needle is not accurately seen or not advanced in a controlled manner, it might accidentally cause pneumothorax. Hence, if you ask me, I would not recommend this technique for the beginners. Then, the next question in your mind would be, what technique do I prefer and why? I will disclose the answer in my next video. Until then, keep blocking, keep rocking.